Hey guys, what's up? And welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna be talking about my all time favorite TV show and favorite fictional world ever, Avatar The Last Airbender. Flamey oh, hot men, hot women, and all of you hot people. Today we're gonna be doing another If I Were In, and honestly, you guys, I am so, so excited for this one. This one has a special place in my heart. In case you're new here and have no idea what the hell I'm talking about, If I Were In is a series I do here on the channel where I make a self-insert character into a bunch of my favorite properties and fictional worlds. So far, we've done Marvel, Fantastic Beast, and Star Wars, which you can check out in the playlist linked in the iCard up in the corner. It's always so much fun. I literally do this in my personal life anyway. Way, like with my friends and my girlfriend and stuff. So this is always a blast to record. And one of the best things is that I get input from you guys. So if you have any ideas for videos that you want to see characters created in so that you can make your own and see what I come up with, go ahead and suggest them just like all these people did. And I'll make sure to record one soon. I'm super excited to see what you guys can come up with. But guys, today is a monumentous occasion for me, okay? We're going to be talking about Avatar. Now let me give you a brief history of my relationship with Avatar, okay? It is my longest running fandom. I mean, I guess you could say like Disney because I watched it as a kid, but Avatar was the one that I sought out the longest on my own personal accord. I love this show and I have ever since I was young. I mean, look at this picture. Look at me, young stunner. I wish I had that shirt to wear today. I always try to wear theme shirts, but I just wore like a dark blue shirt because I don't have any Avatar merch. But I have loved this show for so long. When I was a kid, it used to excite me. As I got a little older, the world building really fascinated me. And then as I started to become an adult, its philosophy really shaped what I believe and who I am to this day. When I was a teenager and started taking steps towards understanding mental health and stuff, I actually used Avatar as the lens that I would look through to help me understand it better and get excited about, you know, pursuing a healthier mindset. Its lessons and teachings have just meant so much to me. I love all the characters. I'm so in love with the world. And one of the coolest things about it is that I get to share this love with my girlfriend now. We watched the entire series together, the original one and Korra, and she loves it just as much as I do. And talking about it with her, coming up with all these fictional scenarios, all of these debates, talking about the characters we love is one of my favorite things in the world to do. And now I get to do that here. One of the things that I always find us talking about is who we would be and what we do if we were in Avatar. So I took those questions, put them in a list, which you can find pinned in the comment section down below. And I figured we could answer them together and find out who we would be if we were in Avatar, The Last Airbender, or I guess The Legend of Korra as well. So I got the questions on my handy dandy phone here. I'm gonna pull them up and let's get started. Question number one, what would your name be? Avatar has a bunch of really cool names. You could pick something like Zuko or you could, you know, pick Lee. There's like a thousand Lees. But when rewatching The Last Airbender with my girlfriend, I stumbled upon something great. In the episode where the gang finds the Wan Shi Tong library and they find the anthropologist from Ba Sing Se University, his name is Zay. <laughs> oh my God, my name exists in Avatar. So obviously, obviously my character's name is Zay. Question number two, how old are you and when were you born? I'm gonna say that my character Zay is 20 years old. That's how old I am now and I feel like it fits. Uh, as for when I was born though, I want to be born so that I'm 16 when harmonic convergence happens and all the new airbenders start coming up. And I think that gives you a little bit of an idea of what element I like. Question number three, what gender does your character identify as? He's gonna be a dude. Question number four, what do you look like? I'm gonna look just like I do now. I, I always have this running thing in these if I were ins of including my, uh, my clavicle scar right here. So that's gonna be in there. We'll say from a saber tooth moose lion cub. Uh, not, not a cub, not a baby. I didn't get attacked by a baby, but you know, an adolescent, one of the angry teenagers pubescent rage and all that. But aside from that, I'm gonna say I look just like I do now. Aside from how I look physically though, and going towards like what I would wear, I imagine myself wearing a sort of hood uh, outfit with a coat over top of it. Coats like you'd see in Republic City with some baggy tan pants and some nice light slippers. <laughs> not slippers, that's not sandals. That's the word I'm looking for, sandals. Like Toms, I'd wear Toms. <laughs> Question number five, what is your nationality? Well, I'm gonna say actually that I'm from the Earth Kingdom. I don't think I would be an earthbender, but I feel like if I were to be from anywhere, that's where I would be from. In particular, somewhere in like the Northwest, almost to Republic City, maybe just a little south of it. Something in the general area of the Abbey from book one. The reason that I picked that is that uh, for me to look the way that I do, I think I'd have to be from the Earth Kingdom. Up until Legend of Korra, there weren't a lot of people that looked like me, no curly hair, no color of my skin. 
But Kai basically has my skin color and I feel like I look a lot like him. And you know, we've seen a bunch of characters with textured hair in The Legend of Korra if you just happen to look in the background. And even in the original series, I think you see some people with some darker skin tones all from the Earth Kingdom. So I feel like for me to look like the little biracial half black, half white person that I am, I would have to be from the Earth Kingdom. All right, so now on to the interesting stuff. What would you bend? Now, this is something that I've obviously put a lot of thought into. I'm not talking about like sitting down for 20 minutes or something like that. There have been years of my life, nay, probably a decade of my life dedicated to me trying to find out what I would bend. And I know what it is. I would be an airbender. Personally, I think my natural kind of way of behaving and natural philosophy lines up with a lot of airbending principles. But as I've grown up and become an adult, I've actually realized that a lot of what the airbenders stand for is stuff that I really appreciate. I really resonate with this element of freedom and there's nothing else that I would rather be in. And that's actually why I picked to be in the Legend of Korra timeframe as opposed to being in the last airbender timeframe. As I mentioned, I don't think that I would look the way that I do if I wasn't from the Earth Kingdom. So if I want to look like I'm from the Earth Kingdom, but bend air, the only thing that I could do is assume that my character was part of the harmonic convergence uh, new influx of airbenders. So I would bend air and God, I wish I could in real life. <laughs> but when I imagine myself airbending, it's not necessarily the traditional moves. I think I would want to learn those, but I think that it'd be really interesting to try to implement some modern fighting techniques. In book one of Korra, we see Bolin teaching Korra modern earthbending that's more akin to boxing. Not saying rooted in these low stances, but being able to bounce around and invade and then get power when you need it, you know? When I first watched this, I thought that that was a technique reserved for like the new modern earthbending, but I actually found in book four of Korra recently that Mako has the same fighting style and not just book four, he does it throughout the entire series, but there was this one scene where he's in the giant mech that really stood out to me, where he like weaves under somebody's attack. And like, it just, it really stood out that it's like, oh, he's boxing too. So seeing that that fighting technique can be adapted to fit into different elements, I think that I would actually implement stuff like that. For a more clear example of what I mean, look at, you know, how they fight where it's like almost boxing, but you can also look at Kai when he's learning how to uh, fight with the Dai Li and he just throws a very, very light, but he just throws like a very light jab. I feel like it'd be more like that as opposed to like Aang's, you know, slicing moves and stuff like that. And speaking of bending techniques, that leads us to the next question. What sub bending techniques would you know? Now, air bending has two sub bending techniques that are both reserved for like very high level people. Those sub bending techniques, as I'm sure you know, if you're watching this, are unassisted flight and astral projection. The only person we see project their spirit is Janora, and the only person we see fly unassistedly is Zaheer. Now we will say that we hear about Guru Lahima flying, but we don't see it, and we see Korra project your spirit. But the reason I bring that up is to illustrate how high level these moves are and how special they are. As much as I would love to have like all these crazy cool powers, I think realistically, it would take a lot to learn that, and I don't know if I'd be able to do it. But that being said, if I had to pick one, I think that I would learn spiritual projection or astral projection. I think it's super interesting. I think it's super useful, but I think the biggest part is that I think realistically I could learn how to do that over flight. Spiritual projection or astral projection seems to just require a very tight relationship to the spiritual world. And I think that if I really hunkered down, I could learn that. Flight on the other hand though, requires a detachment from the world. And I have a lot of attachments that I really value. I can't imagine a world where being able to fly is more important to me than the relationships that I have. So because of that, I would choose to be able to project my spirit. All right, so next question, who is your mentor? Who taught you how to bend? Now, if we're strictly sticking to this timeline, I would have to learn from Tenzin. He's the only airbending master around and I think that that's the only way that I could learn, right? But we saw from Kai and a few of the other airbenders that the Dai Li were able to actually train them in fighting despite not even knowing the element that they were teaching them. So I think it stands to say that you could learn general fighting techniques from other people. So what I'm going to say is that I learned the roots and the base of airbending from Tenzin and then eventually moved on once I felt like very comfortable and felt like I was proficient to finding other styles to adapt into. Now, I mentioned that boxing kind of style earlier. The people that we see doing that in the show are Mako and Bolin. I mean, you see Kuvira kind of do the same thing, but forget about that for now. <laughs> so they were coached by Toza, who I'm assuming is the person that taught them this fighting style and all these different stances and all that. So I'd like to think that in addition to having actual airbending training and learning the philosophies and, you know, the traditional movements and all that kind of stuff, I'd like to think that I'm also in the background or even eventually go on to learn this style of fighting from him. So I guess my answer would be that I was taught by Tenzin and Toza. Moving on to the next question, Question, do you have any animal companions? Of course I do. I cannot explain to you how badly I wish Sky Bison were real. I want one so bad. Make them real. Find one for me, Skies. Find one. 
send them to me. <laughs> I would want a sky bison so bad, so bad. To fit in with the story that I'm creating for this character, I would imagine that at 16, when I get my airbending powers, I go over to Air Temple Island and learn how to airbend. And I would think that eventually I get a sky bison. I think that that would happen around like 17 or 18 or so. I imagine it being a boy though. I really don't care. Just give me one. <laughs> and as for names, <sighs> I don't know. In real life, I have a cat named Deku and I was thinking like, oh, I'll just name him Deku, but I don't want it to look like I'm naming a character in this after My Hero Academia. And I've thought before about names like Jompo or like Bato. I think Bato's kind of cute, but you know what? For the sake of this, I'm going to go with Deku, but I would 100% have a bison to go fly around the world with. And that leads us to our next question. Do you have any weapons? I 100% have a glider staff, specifically um, in the model of Korra's or like book three Aang's. I love the way that looks. I'd really like for it to open up and have like maroon wings. That's my favorite color. But oh my God, I love glider staffs. Uh, ever since I was a kid, when I would like play around, like acting like I was fighting stuff and stuff like that, I would always want a staff. I just think they're so cool. I love playing with them. And the idea of being able to like glide around as well is just, ugh, just captures my imagination. I want it so bad. Give me a bison and give me a glider staff. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna move on so that I don't make myself sad <laughs> that I will never be able to do this in real life. Maybe I should. Should I go hang gliding? That's like the closest thing to it, right? I'm gonna put a pole up in the upper upper uh, corner on the eye card. Should I go hang gliding to feel like I'm gliding on a glider staff? That is the lamest, geekiest reason to ever do something that cool. All right, let's move on. The next question is, do you have any significant items on your person? Uh, No, I don't have any like, you know, bracelets or anything like that that I carry around in real life that I'm attached to. So no, I'm, that's okay. Maybe I carry around uh whatever Avatar's version of a ukulele is. That'd be nice. Or like a guitar. I play ukulele and guitar. So maybe some kind of stringed instrument would be great. You know what? Yeah, I'll carry that around. And that leads us to our next question. What do you do in the world? Now, my answer to that has always been that I would want to just roam around the world on my Sky Bison and explore. But that didn't feel like it had any purpose to it. But then Legend of Korra had Varric he went and invented movers. And if you didn't know, I'm a film major. So I think that Zay in the Avatar world would have gotten himself a mover camera and he's traveling around on his bison with his crew, which we'll get to later, exploring, learning new ways of fighting, taking on opponents and making movers about the whole experience. Uh, I, that makes me so happy. I, like it. And on to the next question. Do you have a traveling group? Yes, I absolutely do. I think one of the coolest things about this show is that, you know, there's the gang, there's team avatar, you know, in each series. Now that doesn't mean that I think I'd be the avatar or any of my friends would, but I think we'd have a team bender group. <laughs> That group would consist of me, Zay, an airbender with a flying bison named Deku. We have Lyra, a firebender with a cat named Zalvin. We have Bo Den, an earthbender with his platypus bear Arcuda. We have James, another earthbender, and Diego, another airbender. And that's the group that we're traveling around the world with. I love it. I really love it. I, I wish I could see my group on the show. And lastly, the question that always wraps up these videos, What's your character's story? So let me lay it out for you. My character is Zay, a rambunctious kid born in the northwest side of the Earth Kingdom. He grew up a pretty normal life in a small town just outside of Republic City, where he spent his days with his family and his friends. But that normal life was shaken up when harmonic convergence came. The sky went purple, everything felt lost, and when the dust settled, he found himself with new powers. Suddenly he was able to create gusts of winds from his own hands. Zay was now an airbender, a culture thought lost but revived by harmonic convergence. In the beginning he enjoyed his new life, still in the same small town. Eventually his friend group gained a new member when he met Lyra, a firebender whose family also lives in the same small town as a result of the colonies. They hit it off, feelings blossomed, and a relationship came out of it. But then the group found themselves all needing to go to Republic City for opportunity, challenges, and growth. They headed out for the big city, Zay got his airbending training, got himself a bison named Deku, found a love for airbending, the combat, the philosophy, the lifestyle, found a new mentor in Toza who taught him a new style of bending and found movers. So he got himself a camera, got his group together and they headed out into the world to go explore it and record their adventures. And you look up in the sky, chances are you're gonna see Zay and his group flying on Deku the bison. Off to go find new adventures, new opportunity and new movers to make. And that's who I would be if I were in Avatar The Last Airbender. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed. This video it was so much fun to make. I'm really excited to see your characters in this world, so make sure to go down in the comments and leave them there. As you know from the other If I Were In videos, I'm always checking that and responding, and I even make videos talking about them. So if you wanna be in the next Reviewing Your OCs video, make sure to leave it down there and I'll make sure to put you in. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did and subscribe while you're down there if you haven't already. We have a great little team avatar here and you would look great in it. Team avatar, bending group, 
gang, <laughs> what, do we, what do we call it? <laughs> it's a fun community and I think you'd have fun hanging out. So if you don't wanna miss any more uploads, make sure to subscribe. I'll be checking to see your answers to these questions down below. But anyway, I will see you guys soon with another video. And until then, go do some good stuff later.